Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's HVAC. I am glad you joined me today. Had a couple little quick things I wanted to go over. Had some questions and some of the comments that came up. And so I was hoping to try to answer some of those. But first, I wanted to say thank you to all the subscribers out there that like, share, comment, all that kind of stuff that we do on YouTube. I appreciate that. I really do. And don't worry, just as I always say, it is not too late. If you're not subscribed yet, you can go down and hit that little button. There's still time. All you got to do is click it. Share the, share the channel with your friends because sharing with your friends is just just the right thing to do. So on to today, what I wanted to talk about, I had a couple different comments on there about different blower motors in furnaces. And you know, I'm talking just regular blower motors and a residential gas furnace, or really could even be an air handler, or whatever. You know, a couple of questions on there didn't really specify what type of system they were working with. Um, but I want to try to break that down a little bit on some of them because, you know, most of what we normally see, you either have a PSC motor or you have a variable speed motor of some sorts. Um, there are a lot of different variable speed motors out there, um, but PS PSC, uh, which stands for Permanent Split Capacitor Motor, uh, those have been out there for years. Uh, usually there are uh, three, you know, there were some two speed, then there's uh, three speed was pretty common. Some of them had gone to four and five speeds, you know, whatever, where you just pick what wire you wanted and it ran a different speed on the motor. Those were all well and good, but uh, here in the States anyways, I don't know how it is everybody el everywhere else with everybody, but here in the States, uh, a couple years ago, they said, okay, you can't manufacture a furnace with a PSC motor in it anymore. They claimed they weren't efficient enough. That's fairly true. I mean, variable speed motors are more efficient, um, but I don't personally believe that PSC motors were inefficient enough for them to quit putting them in new furnaces. That's my opinion. You know, whatever. Like I said, yes, I agree completely because all these people are going to jump up and say variable speeds are more efficient. Yes, I agree that they are. But I don't think PSCs were bad enough that we needed to just like take them off the market. But whatever. I don't get to make those decisions. Uh, so either way, the, the you know, four, five, three speed motors, whatever they were, they, they did just fine. Um, basically you can describe them as they've got an on and an off, you know, you, before you power everything up, you know, you pick what speed you want it to run. Most of them, you could just, uh, put a wire on a different speed tap, that kind of thing. And it came on, ran full blast. When it, it dropped power, it shut off. That was it. Plain and simple. It is, it's a basic electric motor, just like all your other motors out there. But that's what we saw in furnaces. Nowadays, um, it is required for manufacturers in the States to put a uh, ECM motor in there, electronically controlled motor of some sorts. Now, variable speed motors, or what I call a true variable, some people have different names for them. Um, I, I don't like the idea of some of these new motors out there. Everybody's just calling them all variables because I believe that there are differences. Um, you have, you know, the true variables have been out there for a long time. Uh, most of them had a 16 pin connector on them. So, you know, if somebody sees their, their blower motor, don't be getting into your blower motor. If you're not qualified, um, I do not condone that. Uh, but they got a 16 pin connector on them and it is controlled with, uh, DC most of the time in most of the furnaces. Um, and it will uh, tell that motor what speed to run at. Uh, you got a set of dip switches or uh, little switches on the control board of some sorts. The motor has to match the board. You set it up to basically how many CFM you want it to run, how many cubic feet per minute. Um, you know, how much air do you want that blower in that furnace to push? Simple enough. Variable speed motors are awesome. They are very quiet. They are very efficient. Uh, they do their job. Uh, whenever it gets a call for heat, it'll ramp up. Um, a lot of the furnaces are set up, you know, modern day furnaces, some of your higher end ones anyways, they are set up with uh, ramping profiles. So, you know, when it starts, it'll go to a per, uh, up to a certain percentage. And then after so long, goes to another percentage, and then another percentage until it hits its full capacity or whatever you've got it set for. And then it'll ramp itself back down. It's all done in timing. It's all done with uh, the control board. And there, there are different me uh, methods. It's not just timing. There are different methods. Um, but it ramps up, ramps down, runs different speeds all the time. Again, this does make them very quiet. Uh, because of how they're designed, they are very efficient motors. They don't cost a whole lot to run. Uh, variable speed motors are awesome for um, air circulation uh, when there's not a call for heat or air conditioning. Uh, because you can set them up to run at a very, very low uh, RPM or push a very slow uh, or very small uh, CFM. 
uh, just to move the air. Works awesome if you need air circulation in the house or if you have a lot of air purifiers, uh, things like that. Like my house, I do have several different air purifiers, uh, PCO and a uh, air scrubber and a couple, of, which is an advanced PCO, a couple different uh, cleaners on there uh, in my house. And so I like to clean the air. You're not cleaning air in the house if you're not moving air. So, you know, you turn that variable speed blower on. Uh, it runs it down real slow. Usually nobody ever notices. It's really quiet. Nobody can hear it. It's not blowing the curtains off the windows, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, they work great for a lot of different reasons. And then you have what I call the X13 motor. Now, not everybody these days call them that anymore. But, uh, like I said, variable speed motors have been around for a long time. Uh, it's not a new thing by any means. I mean, they were making them... I don't know, 30 some years ago. And I don't know the date, so don't try to quote me on dates. I don't know when the first one came out, but they've been around for a while. Um, and, um, you know, the variables have been there. Well, then they came out with what they called the X13 motor, which was, it is an electronically controlled motor. Uh, it does have a module on the back, uh, module. It's hard to say sometimes. It does have a module on the back, very similar to a um, variable, true variable speed motor. Uh, but the, one of the biggest things is it's working off a 24 volt control. It's already pre-programmed inside that motor uh, to where, okay, if you put 24 volts to this terminal, if you put 24 volts to that terminal, to this one, they all have different speeds or basically different CFM ratings that it's supposed to be able to turn that uh, blower to produce those CFM, you know, that kind of thing. Um, they do have a ramp up and ramp down feature on most of them. Uh, they do um, ramp up when they start. And they do ramp down when they're when they're done. They're very efficient motors. They work very well. They're very quiet. You know, all these kind of good things. Um, it is a good motor. But, um, you know, the, everybody calls them variable. And they are to an extent. Uh, but with the X13 style motors, you know, some of the manufacturers out there, they call them, um, like there was one that called them, uh, they had a five-speed ECM. And now they have a nine-speed ECM. You know, that's basically just a different type of X13. But obviously, most brands don't want to generalize that all into one individual thing. Nobody wants to say, oh, we've got an X13 motor, just like a so-and-so's brand, or brand X, or brand Y, or brand Z. So, <clears throat> excuse me, they like to come up with different... Um, terms of what they call them. But in reality, in my opinion, they're all X13 motors. Yes, they are a very good motor. They are very efficient. They are quiet and all that kind of stuff. The X13s are basically the standard in motor. So if you're out there trying to buy a furnace or pick a furnace, what one do you want? What one should I get? Whatever. You know, I would ask your sales rep or your service tech, which we all know usually the service techs know more uh, detailed information about the equipment than uh, the sales guys do. You know, if, if they're telling you it's a variable speed motor, ask them, is it a true variable ECM motor or is it like an X13 motor? Because there is a difference. The ver true variables give you more options as far as different settings. You know, if a tech comes out there and says, well, I need a little more heat, need a little less heat, need a little more, uh, you know, a little bit colder air, a little bit uh, warmer air coming out of there, you know, depending on what season you're in, all that kind of stuff. The true variable or the true ECM motor does provide more options. It is more expensive. Um, it's just like driving a, a Hyundai or a Cadillac, you know, they, they do, they, there's different price ranges there, which actually Hyundai makes some really expensive vehicles these, these days. So maybe I shouldn't use that as a reference anymore. Either way, um, you know, it's, it, it is a more expensive motor. It's worth it. I mean, payout is awesome. Um, or return on your investment, I guess is awesome. But, you know, one of the things with it is, you know, once you run out of warranties, that is a very expensive motor. So be aware, you know, you're not buying the cheapest kitty out of the box. You know what I mean? So, you know, it is going to be a little more expensive to replace if something were to happen, you know, 10, 15 years down the road. Not to say that something's going to, I mean, there's a lot of them out there. They're 20 years old and still trucking like the day they were new. Uh, X13s, uh, they're not quite as expensive to replace. Um, they are a little less, but they're still expensive. That's just what it is. Uh, all blower motors are expensive these days. Um, the downfall, in my opinion, to the government's um, putting these mandates on manufacturers to change the style of blower motors or basically only have, you know, very limited of options. You know, they have to be electronically controlled motors now. I do like electronically controlled motors. Um, I would have one in my house, um, on my furnace, or whatever I had, you know, all that kind of stuff. I do like them. I'm not knocking them by any means. But the downside is they are more expensive. 
So what I see that they have done with these mandates is, you know, when somebody does have a repair, it's going to cost the end user more money. I mean, that, that's just what it is. There's nothing around it. But if you do live in the States, uh, you know that's pretty much how our government works. It's nobody ever cares about the end user, so whatever. I'm not going to get on a political rant, but uh, there are some issues in this country um, <laughs> when it comes to that and the end user. Um, but, you know, they are going to be more expensive. Um, you know, if you've got a modern furnace and you have a service tech come out and they say, hey, your blower motor has failed, um, and you're shocked and appalled by the price, it may not necessarily be that contractor's fault. It may not be that technician's fault. It's because of the type of, type of motor that we've had to use, we have had to use because of the restrictions that they have put on uh, the equipment out there that's being manufactured. Contractors got nothing to do with that. Uh, it's uh, all about you know the the manufacturers. Um, they have limitations of what they can put in them uh, because the government's saying, hey, it's got to be this, the, the Department of Energy and everybody else has to say, hey, it's got to be this, this efficient, it's got to be this, it's got to be that. Um, they don't really have much control either. Uh, the distributors themselves, uh, contractors don't really have any control over it whatsoever. Um, we're just the ones that get to be yelled at when you know they're too expensive. So if you don't like it, write your congressman. I don't know, that's all I can tell you. Um, but you know, both motors are good. PSC motors, in my opinion, are fine. Um, they, it, it really simplified things because most of the time, you know, if a service tech went out and found, hey, you have a failed blower motor, I got one on the truck, you know, I carry a couple different sizes, they make several universals, um, and you could throw it in and, you know, several hundred bucks, you're down the road. Not a big deal. Um, you know, with some of the ECM motors, they are finally coming out with, uh, Rescue has a really nice one. Rescue is a, a brand or a model of a, of a multi-speed motor. They are finally coming out with some replacements for ECMs that are a little less expensive than OEM, which is awesome. I like that. And uh, the Rescue brand or the Rescue line of motors is a very, is an excellent line of motors. Uh, they last, they're quiet, they're efficient, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so those work really well, but you know, the days of those, um, PSC motors, they're, they're gone to an extent. And the downside is you usually have to go back with an ECM. If the furnace already had an ECM in it, there are a few ways. If you have a talented technician that knows how to wire things up and you're going to have to use a, a control for your, your warm up and your cool down periods on a gas furnace, things like that. There are ways to wire something up differently. Um, but you're, you're not going to get the same benefits out of your equipment that you had before. So there are definitely some drawbacks and you're going to have to find a talented technician that's able to do so. Um, cause it's not just an everyday fix kind of thing to do that. So if that's assuming you're not going back with OEM either way, I hope that clears a couple things up that actually went a lot longer than I expected. I didn't know there was so much to talk about, about motors, but if you do have any questions, comments, whatever, obviously hit me up. Um, you know, you guys know how to do it. It's YouTube. Uh, but just let me know what you think. And uh, otherwise, you know, I, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out the other ones. If you have not subscribed, and I'll ask one more time in this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like it, share it, all that kind of stuff. Um, be looking out for the new book from Andy's Corner HVAC. Uh, I will give you details on that when it's ready to uh, go into production and release. And uh, we'll go from there. So, hey, anything else, like I said, hit me up. Thank you and God bless. Okay. <laughs>